for hell. Welcome to J Silver Presents, where you present the best in esports from your favorite players. I am joined by Stix A from the Golden Guardians after their win versus TSM. Stix A, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. First, let's talk about the roster. I feel like Golden Guardians has been on a little bit more of a tear since Gory has arrived, but now they're really cementing themselves as a dominant threat in the LCS. What changed over the last few weeks that's ha allowed Golden Guardians to have so much success? I think the main thing is, um, obviously, we got more practice with our mid laner, Gori, who is, as, as everyone can see, is very good, and he's really um, brings a lot of threat to the team fights. And outside of that, I think most importantly, our support and jungle, which are like the crucial roles in a competitive game, have gotten a lot more on the same page. I think when we first started, they both had a lot of different ideas about you know, what should be happening during the game. Um, and I think they got on the same page a lot more. So those things combined, it kind of made our team just mesh a lot better. And I think when we clean up some of our team fighting issues that we had, um, even in our last game everyone saw, then we're going to be really good. But so far, our early games and mid games, I think, are going really well. So. Mm -hmm. How have you been doing working again with Huhi? I know you guys used to play NCLG. And now he's your support. How has it been readjusting to this new lane? Especially when I talked to Hui a couple of weeks ago, he was definitely giving you the praise, a lot of praise as a as a laner. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, it's really cool to play with someone who I, I played with years ago. It's I remember I used to do a queue with him back in the day, and we would play bot lane together, and yeah, we'd always kind of joke about that. But um, yeah, nowadays um, he's just he's just good. Uh, that's like the the most simple way to put it. He's just good at the game. He just knows how to win. I think he has like a winner's mentality, and he's taught me a lot about laning and stuff like that, and just in general my mindset on how I should think towards the game. And I think right now we both think really similarly about how the game should be played throughout the lane phase, team fights, and even just to close the game. So yeah, we have a kind of natural synergy, so it's working pretty well. All right, we'll go on that in a little bit because I want to ask about that lane um but first i want to ask a little bit about just the state of the 80 carry recently as we saw it was a lot of zary we saw a lot of lucian all of a sudden this calista annie lane shows up and annie used to be a support all the way actually when you were on clg annie support was still a thing but now it's becoming a little more popular what makes calista annie this new popular trend uh, yeah, so Calista Annie was a really popular bot duo back, like you said, when Annie was a support. So I think people, just because Annie got buffed and her win rate kind of spiked, uh, she's pretty strong in solo queue right now. So I think people are just trying out that duo because that was like seen as a really strong pairing back in the day. I don't know if it's necessarily that good because uh, Annie back then was kind of like a a mage in the support role. And right now she's more supporty, I'll say, because the reason she got buffed, or the reason her winner ran up is because her buff was like towards her E, right? Where you get a shield, and the shield gets move speed. So I would almost argue that she's actually better with some of the more uh, scaling AD carries. But yeah, I think people are just playing it because it, it looks good together, you know? It kind of makes sense, but... Mm -hmm. Huhi is definitely one to pull out these innovative picks. Um, I talked to him about the set, and I begged him to play Aurelian Soul Support. We'll see how that goes. Um, it does take a lot of trust to come up with these lanes to make sure they're effective because obviously you don't want to get memed on Reddit. Do you do you find yourself putting a lot of trust in who he to make these decisions or is it generally a thing that will help the the team comp? Um yeah, so I mean our, I think our bot lane in particular we have I guess a unique skill set of champs that we can play. Like I'm definitely not one of the AD carries that can only play AD carries and is like a bot on everything else. I like playing mages and stuff like that too, so we both have this kind of mutual trust in each other that whatever we play, we're going to be mechanically proficient at it, and you know we're not just going to pick a champ for fun and then just like ruin the game for our team, right? We're gonna we're playing it because we think we're good at it, and I also think it takes a bit of like self awareness to say you know oh, maybe I'm not so good at this champ, maybe I shouldn't play this one, and I think I think he has that to a really good extent. Obviously, it helps that he was a mid laner before. Um, I think that's definitely the advantage of having a, a role-swapped mid laner as my support, is he can just play a lot of random things. And 
as long as he can explain to me, you know, why it's good and he can show me that it's good, I'm super down for it. I don't need to play meta all the time or anything. Just just be good at it, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's. I want to ask you about yourself. Um, I remember when you made your debut in CLG all the way back in 2015, 2016. And you've had a lot of different career changes. You've gone from, obviously, CLG, Golden Guardians. You've stayed on Golden Guardians for a little bit now. And you've progressed as a player and definitely matured as well as an individual. How would you say your journey and the way you played in the past has played an impact on how you see the game today? Uh, yeah, I think when I first started playing, I was obviously I was put on like one of the best teams. And so it was everything was really easy for me. I just kind of had to, you know, last hit creeps and play well in team fights. That, that was my job. Um, and then as I played more and more and more and the years went on my role in my team started to change a bit to where oh I was now the one with experience so I have to be the one to make the game defining calls and really important things that need to be said in the game um, and that was obviously a bit harder on me because it's a lot harder to focus on your individual play when you're trying to make sure the game is just staying together and not, not exploding over some random mistakes stuff like that um, and now I'm kind of in a bit of a middle ground where now that I have like Huhi and I have I have a lot of vocal people on my team, it's definitely made my life a lot easier that I don't have to worry about these uh, important calls. And I can kind of just do my own thing and just you know just play the mechanical part of my role as best as I can. Um, so yeah, I've, I went through a lot of different phases in my career. I went through losing phases, and it's definitely been tough on my mental and like scarred me in some ways. But at the same time, I think I'm now getting out of that phase and just yeah, just trying to. I guess prove it through winning. Mm -hmm. And we love to see when players do win a lot as well because it's obviously good for their mentality. Thinking about the rest of the split, Golden Guardians does have a lot to prove. They they were a sleeper team last year. Uh, they were, and now you're potentially favorites to enter playoffs. Do you feel like there's a bit of pressure to live up to, to these expectations, or do you think this status of a dark horse? let you kind of um for lack of a better word just be able to have no expectations to you guys and pull off some impressive wins yeah um i guess personally i don't really feel too much pressure i, I don't feel that being on golden guardians um just because i think even if we're doing really well unless we just go on a tear and we win like five six seven games in a row there's not going to be too many eyes on us I think people are still going to expect us to lose to the top teams and stuff like that. And I mean, all we can do is really prove it by just winning versus those teams. And so far, we haven't delivered on that because we lost to the four top teams. So we, I think, just have to make a difference in the second round, Robin. And um, yeah, just do our best there. And then I think if we can do well there, we can really cement ourselves as like one of the top teams. Out of the four teams that you guys lost to, the, the ones that you're referring to, I believe you're, I'm assuming you're referring to C9, FlyQuest, 100 Thieves, and Evil Geniuses. Um, what would you say is the one team that you're looking forward to facing off against again? Uh, for me, definitely C9 and FlyQuest. I think, um, I guess in the FlyQuest match for me, I playing was playing a lot more passive than I usually do. And I think I could have really been the difference maker in that game and we could have won there. Um, and yeah, C9, they won the last split. So obviously I just want to beat them and you know prove that we can beat the team that won last split. So. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm always curious about for players who are definitely advanced in their careers is I always am curious about what's next. For you, you have titles, you've been to the world stage, but I know you said as yourself you've had some slips in the last few weeks or weeks, uh, last few years. What would you say is your biggest goal heading into the next few weeks, potentially into playoffs? Um, I think my biggest goal is just for myself to feel like I played well and that I was proud of how I played and that there was no regrets. Uh, I think that's something I had in the past where, you know, maybe I was like too scared of almost like playing to not lose rather than playing to win. So for me, if I can just play to win every game, I will be satisfied. But as a team sense, I think, yeah, we're definitely trying to make it deep in the playoffs um you know by summer we'd like to go to worlds and stuff like that it's been a while since i've been there so yeah that would be one of my my team goals 
finally, is there anything you'd like to say to the fans of Golden Guardians? Yeah, thank you guys for supporting us. And uh, yeah, we're on a bit of a tear in now, so hopefully we can keep it up. 6 a with that, that's all the questions I have. I really appreciate talking to you, and I look forward to seeing how you do in the rest of the split. Cool, thank you. Thank, thank you. DJ is crying for help.